In a highly dangerous development tonight, Russian troops now shelling Europe's largest nuclear power station, the plant streaming the attacks online. Russia again striking civilian areas. A devastating attack on Chernihiv, a city 90 miles north of Kyiv. Dashcam footage capturing the impact. A freeze frame shows multiple projectiles about to strike as unsuspecting people walk down the streets. And then the explosions, sending residents running for their lives. 33 were killed. 18 wounded, according to the city emergency services. If confirmed, it would be the largest single loss of civilian life in this conflict so far. The rescue operation suspended because of ongoing shelling. As the net closes in on many major cities, the defenders of the capital are digging in. Defenses are now being set up across the city. Concrete barricades, tank traps, as the city prepares for a Russian assault. We met a defiant President Zelensky today at a secret location in the capital. For how long can you hang, hang on? I don't know, he said. I don't know how long. It doesn't depend on time. It depends on us. And when I asked if he'd leave the country, Zelensky was adamant. No. But just 30 miles from where we were speaking, the full scale of the horrors being inflicted upon Ukraine. This is what a scorched earth policy looks like, and it doesn't discriminate between soldier and citizen. Hard to imagine that just one week ago, this was an ordinary neighbourhood, with families going about their lives. The Kremlin seems to be having most success in the south. After taking Kherson, the first major city to fall in this conflict, Russian troops bearing down on Mikolaev and the Russian fleet approaching Odessa in what looks like an attempt to seal off Ukraine from the Black Sea coast. Amid the sound of war, they're still talking. A second round of urgent negotiations was held today between Ukrainian and Russian officials. Both sides have provisionally agreed to possible temporary ceasefires in some places and to open humanitarian corridors for civilians to leave besieged cities. But the Ukrainian side saying, unfortunately, we didn't get the results we'd hoped for. The largest city under Russian siege right now is Kharkiv in the east. It's been mercilessly bombed for days. With the fall of Kherson, Kharkiv and three other cities are now encircled by Putin's troops. But outside Kyiv, the miles-long Russian convoy has been stalled for days a few miles outside the city. A senior US official telling ABC News the convoy seems to be stalled by Ukrainian resistance and supply problems. And as the Russians move up from the south, a siege of this city seems unavoidable. President Putin today claiming the invasion was going strictly according to plan and that all objectives were being met. The reality on the ground suggests otherwise. But he ominously declared Ukrainians and Russians are one people. Earlier, Putin spent 90 minutes on the phone with French President Macron. A source in the French government telling ABC News tonight the fear is that the worst is yet to come. And that's the fear in much of Kyiv tonight, where as many as 15,000 people have been taking shelter in the subway. But there is defiance and unity here. <laughs> Ukrainian lawmakers singing their national anthem in Parliament before starting their work today. One more extraordinary moment of bravery. And Ian Panel joins us again tonight from the Ukrainian capital. And Ian, that was really fascinating today, that secret location, a meeting with reporters and President Zelensky. And, and you asked what everybody at home has been wondering, you know, how, how long does he believe he can hold out against the Russians? Does he plan to stay in Ukraine? And I'm just so curious what your sense of President Zelensky is. Does he recognize, what does he sense he truly faces in the days ahead here? Yeah, I mean, he's strong, he's defiant, but he's clearly exhausted. I mean, the man is surviving on just a few hours sleep a night, uh, but he is defiant. Uh, he knows that he, his country, and this city are facing an existential moment, and he has risen to the occasion. In terms of the battle itself, what he wants is this no-fly zone to try and balance the equation of forces, but he also knows that this is something that the White House is not going to agree to. Uh, and that's why he can't be clear about whether the city, whether the country can hold out against these Russian forces, who are definitely bearing down, even if they've been slightly slowed. Uh, and the truth is that he bears the conscience and the future of the nation on his shoulders. David.
Ian Panel with President Zelensky today. Ian, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.